In this video, I'm gonna try and walk you through how to set up a virtual choir. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So um, this is as <laughs> the longer that we do the social distancing stuff and where churches aren't being able to meet together, people are coming up with some very creative ways to actually still have a semblance of a church service. Um, and that's outside of just having the pastor preach or give a message, whether it be still at the church with a skeleton crew or at the kitchen table at an office or something like that. Some people are wanting to add music and praise and worship, which again, me having a background in being a minister of music, I understand the importance of that. So a lot of people have started to be very creative and put together a virtual choir. I even had my cousin ask me about this before all this stuff got really big. Um, so I wanna try and walk you through how to actually do this because I used to do this all the time when I used to prepare for choir rehearsal anyway. So I wanna walk you through that process and I will tell you right now, if I had to give this out of a five star rating of difficulty, I would honestly have to say this is a four, mainly because of the logistics that's needed to be able to do this. But I'm still gonna walk you through everything that you need to do. All right, so the very first thing that you need to do, whether you have a musician like me or um, anybody else, you want to have start with a foundation. That foundation is going to be the music, whether it has a click track or whatever. You need to have something that's consistent so that if you have musicians, the idea is you send this song out. Everybody has it in their headphones and they have some other method to cleanly record what they're doing. So for example, if I had my keyboard here and I don't have my personas because I sold it, but if I had like a personas or um, a Focusrite, Scarlet 2i2 or any um, interface, or not even that, I could just take my keyboard and just plug it directly into the computer and record it. I would play a song and I would have to make sure that I play it very accurately and then I record it so it's very duplicatable, meaning that everybody is going to hear the exact same thing. The timing is going to be right. Everybody's going to come in at the right time, all that other stuff. So you get that done. Now, if you're adding other musicians, they have to do the same thing. You want to add a drummer, you play the track. And I'll just say I'm starting from a piano. I would play the piano track and then I would send it to my drummer. He would have to be in headphones, have some way to record what he's doing as he's playing along with the track. Now, again, the track does not need to be heard in each um, in each recording because it's going to duplicate itself over and over again. So the idea is, yeah, you want to hear the piano and then now the drummer has it. We don't need to hear the drummer's version of the song we just need to have that first part so we know how everything syncs up that makes it easier when we get to post-production and they let them play you add that as many musicians as you want and then once you get all your musicians if you have multiple compile that together into one performance track an uh, instrumental then that needs to be sent out to all of your choir members or whoever's going to sing, and they need to have some decent method of recording. Like I helped my sister with something like this, and she had one of the new um, Rode USB mics. So she had that. I had her download Audacity, hook that up, very fr um, free program, very simple program that runs on pretty much any operating system. Hook the mic up to record her voice while, again, the exact same thing that we're doing with the musicians. She's listening to it in your headphones. And while that's going on, like here, <laughs> I can pull this out and pull my mic out and I'm sitting here listening to the track and I go ahead and sing along with the sound that's the performance track that's been done by the musicians so I know that I'm in time with what they're gonna be doing. And they just record the track and when that's done, the track 
goes back to whoever's going to be mastering this stuff, whether it be the media director or just somebody who decided to want to, and my mic keeps getting in the way. I shouldn't have pulled it down. There it goes. Out of shot now. Um, <laughs> have somebody just going to take all those um, audio or some people have done video as well too, and I'll probably do the video part with it. It'll work the exact same way, just like how I'm doing right now. I'm recording this with a camcorder and a mic, the mic that I just pulled down. Um, I would just record that, and I'm listening to the music at the same time, and then it just keeps it in sync to where everybody is singing by themselves, but they're singing along, and now, just like in a choir rehearsal, in the computer, you're gonna put all that stuff together. So let me show you I'm going to do something real short and just show you how this whole process will work. All right, so here is an example of a cover that I did to a song to where I did all of the instrumentals on it. Again, it is a cover. I do not own the song. It is my interpretation of one of the songs, and it's a, just an instrumental track. So what I would do is say this happens to be the song. I would download this, or I can just have everybody go to this link, but I'm going to download it so that I can show you the whole process. All right, so now I need to set a good quality audio. Now I'm going to, again, it's late, so I'm not going to be able to get as loud as I want, so you're going to have to tolerate my bad singing here. Um, but I'm going to come in here and set the audio, and we're going to be capturing audio directly from the webcam. All right, so we have it here. Now I'm unmuting it. So you can have anybody do this, whether they do it with OBS, they can just record off their phone. It doesn't matter. You just need a way to have clean audio as well as um, capturing video, because that's what this is all about, to have a virtual choir so people can actually see the choir. So all I'm gonna do is, while OBS is set up now to record, I'm gonna bring up my phone <clears throat> and then I'm gonna play the song that I just downloaded and I'm going to sing along to that and then I will record the other parts to simulate as if I was multiple people and doing the exact same thing. I might even change my shirt to make it look like I'm different. So let's go ahead and just record this. Now again, this was done, can be done with um, Audacity if it was just voice or we're doing it with video so we're going to get both. All right. Although sometimes you have to cry over things you can't explain. All right, I'm over here in DaVinci Resolve, so let's go ahead and load up all of our data. So I'll just bring that over here. And then I need to bring over the track that I was using. So I'll put that under master. All right, so now we're going to start stacking this stuff. All right, so let's come in here into our editor. We're going to start with our track, background track being the bass, and we're going to follow this, the wave of the sound. And this is what we're going to try and match to help us get everybody in sync. All right, so let's start with the first track here. All right, so I'm hearing it. There's no music. It's just me singing. So this is my actual, um, the solo. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and name this track Soloist. Makes it easy. Now let's bring it down here. And I don't know why I did that. All right. So we got our track here. And let's actually move this down and move this one up so they're right beside each other. All right. So now I just got to play it and sync it up to where the parts are. So this is actually the beginning of the song right here. One, two, three, four. So that's where the song starts right here. I'm going to make a mark right there so at least I know at the beginning where the parts are. So now I need to find the same thing for when I start singing. All right, so right there. So now I'm just going to play them and make sure they go along with each other. All right, so I'm a little off. So I just need to drag it forward some. All 
So this is where the patience is gonna come in to get everything lined up. All right, so this one is in sync. So I got it lined up and the first one is always the hardest. Now I need to just start stacking these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's shrink this down and crop some of the stuff out of the sides. So let's just say 550 to make it even, then another 550 on this side, all right? All right, and let's clean up the audio just a little bit. Actually, I need to bump it up because I'm using my webcam. Um, need some better audio. All right, so we got the solos there. So now let's go to the next track. Now this one is different because I don't sing the entire time. All right, so it's right there. Let's try a little bit early. All right, so right here is where it looks like that will actually go. So now let's sync that up. And most of the time when you're doing a song, the wave the, the way the wave looks looks similar so it makes it kind of easy to sync it up as you can see for the most part it has the ups and downs that you would expect so let's stack them and play them and it matches all right and this is the one that's over top so let's shrink this down first and now let's position it to where we put these caps And we're gonna crop it here. All right, so this is Soprano. All right, and then we're just gonna keep stacking these and putting them together and creatively putting them wherever on the screen that you want. Now that was a very quick and abridged version of how to do this. Obviously, I'm only doing a small section, small enough to hopefully that YouTube won't hit me with a strike with it, but just to show you the concepts of what it can do to where first off, you need to have a base where that is a track that's done to where it's easily repeatable so that when people sing with it, the timing is gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be somebody just playing off the cuff. You can hand that same track to other musicians as long as they have a Way to properly record and then you hand that same song off to your different singers and then they can record from their phone a tablet their computer a webcam it really doesn't matter they just need to be able to hear that track in a way that's isolated so it's not being picked up by the recording so you have a clean slate of just them singing and then you take it into your video editor of choice and then you take the time to put them and sync them all together and especially since everybody is singing on that bass track all the first one is normally the hardest and then you can base everybody else off of that now some other programs um, if you left that music in which I don't think you should it will probably make it a lot more difficult but if you did leave it in like in DaVinci Resolve there's a way that you can have the program automatically sync all the songs together based off of the waveform that could work as well too I should have tried that but I just didn't I just I'm old school, I just do it that way. So um, here is a small section of the finished product. And that's how I would put this together and that's how I normally would put stuff together when I'm practicing for choir rehearsal but it looks like that's what everybody is doing now and that's a way that you can make a virtual choir so if you've ever done something like this in your choir please 
please let me know in the comments. Point a link to wherever it is. If you're on YouTube or on Facebook or something like that, I'd love to check it out. I do love music and I do love some good singing. Um, but anyway, I hope that at least gives those people who have thought about it enough information to even tell yourself, yeah, we don't have that yet or it's a good guide to at least get you where you're going so you can see a small excerpt of how that would work. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell to where you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media industry. This is AJ, we'll see you on the next video.